Welcome back. Activists are continuing to aggressively confront Senator Kirsten Sinema over her objections to the cost of the president's multi-trillion dollar spending bill. And now a New York Times writer is calling out Sinema for not being on the same page as her party. Here to react, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, here's the piece by Maureen Dowd. It says cinema stars in her own film, quote, the Arizona senator's name is pronounced cinema and it is apt because she sweeps and sometimes when the triathlete has a sports injury limps through the Senate like a silent film star. Her point is that if Biden continues to fail, it could set the stage for Trump in 2024. Why can't they quit Donald J. Trump? Oh, clicks, a lot of clicks, a lot of ratings. I was looking at CNN's ratings, Todd, from Friday. They have primetime shows that can't even get 600,000 people to watch. I mean, it, it is a remarkable fall for a lot of these publications where the epicenter was Donald Trump and all things were Trump because it gave them something to complain about. Now, when journalists are supposed to hold this administration, you know, the one that's in power, accountable without fear or favor to party, it's, it's, it's something that isn't in their DNA. Uh, for, for the most part. But I love this argument. Take one for the team because the president needs a win. What about the well-being of the American people? Does Maureen Dowd, who lives probably a very comfortable life as one of the highest paid columnists at the New York Times, care that passing such a massive spending bill will drive up inflation even higher? It's already at a 30-year high, and that's a painful tax on everyone, especially the low and middle class. But Dowd says to the cinemas and managers of the world, hey, even if you disagree with this kind of spending because there's really no means to pay for it, support it anyway because Biden can use a W. It's comical. But Here's another reason why Cinema and Mansion may not be supporting this that very few mention. In Arizona, the president is polling at 38% approval. That's not exactly a wagon one way hitch their star to. In West Virginia, <laughs> he's at 18% approval. Independents are leaving him in droves. He's down 20 to 25 points since June. It's a train wreck. So why support a president that's this unpopular right now with a spending plan that supposedly costs zero dollars, which everybody knows is completely not true? So. That's where we are at this point. Well, you mentioned independence, and there is another independent. So let's talk about Andrew Yang, because he quits the Democratic Party, saying, quote, I'm confident that no longer being a Democrat is the right thing. Our system is stuck. Many of the people I know are doing all of the good they can, but their impact is constrained. Now that I'm not a member of one party or another, I feel like I can be even more honest about both the system and the people in it. Look, Joe, we've spent countless times, and you mentioned it quite frequently, that independents are the, the people to watch when it comes to elections because that really gives you a gauge on, on how things are going to play out. You have someone who has been in the spotlight from the Democratic Party, now an independent. You just wonder if people in general are kind of getting tired of this far extremes on both sides and, and trying to kind of pave their own way. What do you think of that? Yeah, Jillian. I think it reminds me of Tulsi Gabbard in, in the sense where she also ran for president, like Andrew Yang, but it looked like the Democratic Party had left her, like it left Yang, because now, as we're seeing Nancy Pelosi kowtowing to the squad wing of the party, angering moderates like Josh Gottheimer, my, my congressman uh, here in, in New Jersey, who wanted the bipartisan bill passed and then was told he was going to get a vote on Monday, Thursday, and Friday last week. It never came because the squad runs the party at this point, and I wonder if Yang looks at what the Democratic Party has become, where, you know, he's a pragmatic guy. He's an original thinker. You may not agree with everything he has to say, but he's not a conformist. That's certainly for sure. And I think Andrew Yang said, you know what? That's it. I, I, I'm out of here. Uh, I ran for New York mayor. It didn't go well anyway, so I might as well try something else. Hmm. And you wonder if it's part of a trend. You really do. Yeah. All right, Joe. Good yeah. to see you. Thank you, Joe. Have a good day.